if we don't use what he gives us right now in our hands that he gives us right now and then give that to him and let him use it the way he wants to use it and grow through it we won't make it in the days to come Mm -mm. and i promised my husband i'd stay the course yeah and i will do that whatever it takes chasing jesus Hey family, welcome back to Chasing Jesus. I'm Jordan, and I'm really excited that you're back with us today. We have a really special guest. Um, This is Renee Parra, and she is somebody that is very special to me for a number of reasons. We were actually just talking about the ways that she has been even connected to Taylor, um, you know, through homeschool co-ops and things. So she's actually known both of us for quite some time. I took a sign language class Mm -hmm. and did some creative movement Mm -hmm. with Renee when I was in high school, Um, but more recently kind of reconnected because of Faith Alive Ministries, our nonprofit organization, um, and the work that we do with widows in Stanley County. Mm -hmm. And so this is a seat that is probably not the one Renee would like to be sitting in and representing this, this population of women who have walked through great loss, but... I don't know of anybody who could who could honestly um, represent the goodness of God even in the midst of so much brokenness and pain. So I'm just glad that you're here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I'd like, honestly, just for you to share a little bit about you and mm-hmm. Nehemiah mm-hmm. because both of you are precious people. Mm-hmm. And um, I love hearing your story mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. what a good man and a beautiful mm-hmm. marriage you had. Yeah. Well... Um, I am from the foothills of North Carolina. Nehemiah was from out west, Wyoming and Colorado, but we met in Dallas, Texas at Bible College. Yeah. And um, literally was a whirlwind whirlwind romance. Within four months, he basically asked me to marry him. And we only knew each other 11 months, and we got married. Yeah. Yeah. so people think that's crazy today, but it worked for us. Yeah, and if you know, you know. Yeah, it worked for us, and... We knew that we were supposed to be together. There was just no doubt. We were babies. We were only 18 years old. Wow. But, you know, we just didn't really care. You know, so when God highlights that person in your life, you know. Yeah. So um, we finished our college out and became pregnant with our first son, had him in Dallas, Texas, and decided we weren't going to stay there after graduation. We were going to move either to... Uh, Colorado where his family was at or North Carolina where mine was and I just followed his lead and he prayed and God gave him peace for us to move here yeah so that's how we ended up here and um, you know just you know he started working for my dad for the first year so we were here um, as a paint contractor and then the Lord opened a door with what used to be called uh, vision cable yeah you know time warner cable so he he started working for them, and um, I always kept children. My whole life, I nannied or babysat kids, and so I continued that while I was here. So I opened my own, basically my own daycare, mm-hmm. and I've had it for many, many years. And so he worked there for 37 years um, yeah. with Time Warner and uh, was blessed on his job. Mm-hmm. God used him many, many ways on that job to reach a lot of people, I believe. Um, but... In time, we had another child, and then we had another child. Uh-huh. And we had all boys, and um, you know, we always wanted a girl. We were super blessed to have our boys. We love our boys, um, Joshua, Christopher, and Benjamin, and I homeschooled them. That's how I um, kind of know who Taylor is. Uh huh. Um, so, because uh, I knew Taylor's mom. Um, but in time, the Lord was already for years. He'd already spoken to me about this but I always knew I wanted to adopt Mm -hmm. because my family when I was growing up were foster parents yeah and I told Nehemiah when we got engaged I said I want to go ahead and let you know that I know in my heart that one day I want to be a foster parent and one day I want to adopt yeah and he was all for it so once we were finished with our having our own three and since we had three boys we just felt like if I got pregnant again I'd have a fourth boy (laughs) and we always wanted a girl so You know, um, we became foster parents, and God opened the door. We had a lot of children before um, we got Katie. Yeah. Katie came into our life at 15 days old, and um, she has a whole story that one day would be wonderful for here. Yeah. A whole story that is, she's, she's a miracle. It's miraculous, 
And God brought her into our life at a time we didn't even know we needed her. Yeah. And so, <sighs> Nehemiah and Katie were super close. Yeah. When she came to live with us, um, he just melted. And so we had this beautiful daughter together, and we know that she was born in our hearts. We know that. Yeah. And so our life was with these four children. Nehemiah coached ball, and I taught worship dance at our church and taught sign language and, you know, just let God use us in the areas that we were at. And so um, as time went on, our children grew up and got married and had grand we had grandchildren. And, um, you know, life just moved on. We helped start. We were at First Assembly for many years, and we helped start the gathering, which, which is where we're at right now. And I watched my husband just bloom and blossom in a way and grow in a way I've never seen when we helped start the gathering. We yeah. planted the gathering. And um, we just started. We had a community group in our home. We um, mentored young couples. And God just led, led us in different directions together, but as a couple and as a family. Mm -hmm. And we felt like we were just doing everything that he called us to do. Uh, and then, uh, you know, COVID hit. Yeah. And I don't have to talk about COVID much. I really don't want to focus on COVID. Um, but um, we did say, we did decide that we were tired of hearing about COVID during COVID. Yeah. And so we cut off everything that had to do with it. We didn't want to hear it anymore. But we did say, you know, if we get COVID, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Yeah. We knew people, we knew two, two people that had been on the vent and came right off the vent after being on the vent for two months. Wow. We knew this, but we knew no one that had died. And so we just knew if we got COVID, we'd be okay. But if we didn't, we made the comment, we'll be with Jesus. Yeah. We're just not going to worry about it. We're not, not live gonna, in fear. We're not going to live in fear. We're not going to focus our life on, um, you know, just being isolated. We're not doing that. So we both got it. Yeah. Um, in June of 2021, I got sick and... Um, it wasn't too bad, but I got, got right through it. Then he started feeling bad. And it was like this, it was a fast moving train with, for him. Yeah. It and he was did. otherwise healthy, right? Oh my goodness. He, we were both runners. Yeah. Uh, he was a big time runner, very healthy, had just gone for a physical. Nothing was wrong with him in any way, shape or form that we knew of. And, um, so when he got COVID, it, it moved quickly into his lungs, and by the time I got him to the hospital, it, it's, his lungs were covered. With He had got COVID pneumonia. Mm -hmm. It was a long, hard battle. Um, if any of you know me, I'm sure you followed what went on, um, but our world prayed. Yeah, I was going to say, the community Facebook was uh, covered, you know, with people lifting him in prayer. Mm -hmm. We prayed, and we trusted God, and we just knew there was no doubt about it that he would come up, he would rise up from that bed, and he would have even more more powerful testimony. Mm -hmm. We were so looking forward to that, what God was going to use, how he was going to use this. And so there was never a doubt. And uh, as you know, time went on, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And the thing I can say is that COVID never attacked anything in my husband's body except his lungs. And I'm thankful to God for that, that when we had to um when we had to let him go on august the 19th of 2021 when we had to let him go it was peaceful yeah and god gave us what we needed as a family uh we all gathered around him together as a family my boys and my daughter and their wives and um you know we had communion communion was a big thing for us and um so we had communion together and we we just trusted God and we asked God to show us what we needed to do and how we needed to handle that. And he did. He did. He clearly showed us in Nehemiah's body because Nehemiah couldn't speak to us and tell us. I had a really hard time with the thought of taking him off the vent. Yeah. Um, I just didn't know if it was the right thing to do. And I prayed and asked God to show me. And um, I said, show me. Let Nehemiah be able to show me in his body when is the right time or if this is the right decision mm -hmm. and uh the morning of august 19th his his body changed his breathing changed and we knew in our hearts that he was in pain then 
Yeah. And I couldn't stand seeing him in pain any longer. And so we knew it was time. So we gathered around, like I said, and had communion over him and prayed over him. And my niece had sent a vision that God had given her. She had texted it to me, and I read that vision over him. And it was a vision of him uh, stepping into a green valley. And it was wide open, and there were flowers, and there was mountains in front of him. And all of a sudden, there was a, uh, and it was just Nehemiah in the valley. And all of a sudden, there was this um, huge funnel of white, a white funnel that just went into him. Mm. And I knew that God was showing us that that was the breath of God breathing into Nehemiah's lungs, and he was taking him home. Wow. And so we read that over him as he passed. And God gave us incredible peace. And um, not to say it wasn't hard, but he gave us peace that was its not even, I can't even explain it. Yeah. Um, even to this day, it's hard to understand it. But I know it was God's peace. I mean, yeah. it was obvious. And what I was told, there were 17 people in the room, and all of them were just so taken back by the peace of God that was there. Wow. Yeah. Um, the chaplain of the hospital was there, and I wasn't even aware that he was there until it was over. And he came up to me and said, I want you to know we don't see this kind of uh, thing happen here. He said, it's just the opposite what we see here. He said, what I just saw, I've never seen before here. Wow. Uh, and so was, he said, you have affected this whole ward with the way you walk through this with your husband. Wow, how and beautiful. And so, yeah, even in his death, how he affected people's lives and how he... The way he did in his life, he mentored men and helped men, and we helped couples together that even in his death, he was able to, his story was able to affect people. Yeah. So I was grateful for that. That gave me great peace that day. Yeah. Yeah. I I yeah. love that. I mean, even talking about your life together, mm-hmm. I think what I admire so much about y'all is... You know, we so often think that the people who can really change the world and make a difference for the kingdom are the ones who maybe stand in the pulpit Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. lead worship. And like Nehemiah, I mean, had a a normal job, Mm -hmm. you know, he worked for Spectrum, Mm -hmm. but he absolutely changed the world. And you two are just such examples of living the kingdom out and doing all that God called you to do in your home and in your community. And like you said, even in his passing, the fact that he was still ministering to people and his life was still a testimony of God and his goodness. Um, it's just a rare thing, mm-hmm. you know, and it's mm-hmm. something beautiful to hang on to. Yeah. There was, a, I'll give you a quick example of um, what happened right before he passed. There was, the whole ward was full of COVID. Mm-hmm. It was on a COVID floor. Was it at Stanley? No, it was at Northeast. Gotcha. He was at Stanley first and moved to Northeast. But there was a, two doors down from us was a Hispanic family that their father, their, the husband was on the vent. And uh, we could tell he was leaving. Mm-hmm. And... The day that he passed, I, uh, well, two days before he passed, I went out. I felt very impressed to go out into the hallway and speak to the family and just speak to them about Jesus, and I did. Yeah, wow. I did. I just told them I was praying for them. We compared what was going on with our husbands, and I just held, I just prayed with them Yeah. for peace. And uh, the day that he passed... My son Benjamin was with me, with Nehemiah, when we heard the screams and the wails. That's why I'm saying things were so different in our room. Yeah. It, screaming. And I went outside in the hallway and found the family just in a shambles. And I, Benjamin said, you have to go, Mom. You have to go help them. Wow. So I went and held the mother and the daughter, just held them and let them cry. They didn't even know me. And I didn't know them. But I knew I was supposed to hold them. Yeah. And I told them this was the arms of God holding them. And it just, you know, that's the kind of thing that happened while we were there. Yeah. Yeah. And you've just continued that, Renee. I know this has been like by far the hardest thing that you've ever walked through. But I've even watched over the last year the number of other widows that you've connected with and you've reached out to. I mean, I think of like Cynthia, whose husband passed on the very same Same. day. Mm -hmm. And it's like all these women who maybe the circumstances aren't exactly the same, but you've used what you've walked through just to minister Mm -hmm. to so many women. And Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Um, And, you know, we talked 
talk all the time about the strength that you, you, that you have as widows and how it's like, we don't want this. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's not something that I ever signed up for or mm-hmm. wanted or I desired. But it's just a fact that yeah. God has used you in such amazing ways. Yeah. Uh, if I'm going to be here, I determined early on that if he is going to keep me here, uh, I just want him to use me. Yeah. There will be no point in me being here any longer. Yeah. Because I didn't want to stay, of course. I wanted to leave when he left. It's super hard on a widow. Yeah. And um, because you lose everything. You feel like you lose everything. Everything changes. Everything from the time you, when the minute he goes, everything changes. And, you know, the way you eat, the way you sleep. Uh, Just um, going to church is hard. Yeah. I know you said that's like the hardest thing, going to church on your own. To this day, Sunday's my hardest day. To walk in there alone, but more, more even to walk out alone. Yeah. And go back home again, without him. So those those things are hard. Everything changes. We we lose our covering. Yeah. We lose the one that was the one there to protect us and take care of us. Someone to um, talk to at the end of the day. I missed immediately. I missed. Um, cooking breakfast for him every morning and I missed hearing his bucket truck come in the driveway at five o'clock in the afternoon I didn't hear that anymore I missed the dogs barking when he'd come in the door just things like that were just all loss after loss after loss after loss piled on top of each other that most people wouldn't know unless they went through it there's no way they'd know everything a widow um, widows lose everything at one time yeah yeah. And then it continues. It continues on and on and on. Every day is something else. Every day is something else. So, you know, we have to, I know I've had to rely on my family and my close friends to help get me through this, um, to move through this, um, and to, and, but the only way that I'm still sitting here is the power of the Holy Spirit to keep me alive. Yeah. It's the only way. So I'd like for you to share a little bit about that, just because I know, and you know, we we had lunch last week, Mm -hmm. and and you just, um, you know, came up on the third anniversary, Mm -hmm. and you were even sharing with the group, the Women of Purpose group, how different it was this year. Um, So just can you share a little bit about how you have seen God sustaining you and Mm -hmm. how you've seen his faithfulness Mm -hmm. through Mm this? Oh, gosh. I could uh, write a book. Yeah, and you will. I could write a book. Uh, of all the his goodness to me you know three years ago I would not have even thought of that that there would be any good that came out of this how could there be any good why and you know people came up to me at the funeral and came up and said you know God's going to work good they speak scriptures over you and there's nothing wrong with that Mm -mm. it was the right thing the right things for me to hear but they still even scriptures to a widow can hit us so hard. How can good come out of this? Yeah. And why? Why? When he was at the peak of his life, why? Mm. And so I've had to refocus my, it took a long, it's taken a long time, refocus my thoughts and my heart daily. I have to focus on what good he is doing in my life right now. Yeah. So he's given us two more grandchildren. One was born while Nehemiah was on the vent. So Nehemiah never got to meet him, but I will tell this quick story. I have to do this before I move on. Yeah. When Nehemiah first got sick, uh, the day before I took him to the hospital, he felt good enough to go outside and sit on our back deck. And at the time, my son and his wife were pregnant and going to have a boy. And Nehemiah knew. We all knew that they were having a boy. And she was due any time. She was like eight and a half months pregnant then. And um, they wouldn't tell us the baby's name, though. They would just, we just knew it was a boy. So he felt good enough to go out and sit on the deck that day. And me and my son, Chris, were sitting there. And Nehemiah began to cry. And just tears just coming down of his eyes. And he kept looking out toward the property behind our house. And we had given my son and his wife property to build behind our house. They were going to be starting it soon. And he kept looking out there and crying. I said, honey, what's wrong? What's the matter? Why are you crying? He said, I just keep looking out there, and I keep seeing that little boy. Wow. I said, what do you mean? He said, I can see him. I can see that little boy running up through the woods, running up through the driveway to me. I can see him, Renee. 
So God gave him a vision of cash before cash was ever here. Wow. I know this. Yeah. I know this. We were just stunned. Wow. And when Nehemiah was invented, three days later, cash was born. Uh, the number three has become something mm-hmm. recently to me. And cash was born in his name as Cassius Nehemiah. Oh. And so you ask what's going on with me now. So the Lord and what's happened with me since then, um, he has given me so many things to carry me through. So many things. Um, yes, I'm on the third anniversary. Nehemiah's third, here's the three, anniversary was Monday. Yeah. The 19th of August. Um, this is the 23rd of August, which is the day of his funeral that I'm speaking to you today. Wow. So I'm in my third year. And, you know, to me, numbers are important. Uh, they are. Mm-hmm. And I know that God uses time and timing in our life. It's very important. So I know that I'm here speaking in the third year for a reason. Yeah. I know this. So he's carried me through in so many different ways. This week, how he's carried me. We can back up to some other things. But this week, how he's carried me is um, Monday, I did okay during his third day. Yeah. I did okay. And that night, my niece texted me and she said, Aunt Renee, you need to go outside and look at the moon. And I said, okay. So I walked outside and I was shocked at what I saw. The sky was blue. This was 920 at night. The sky was blue. And the moon was so bright, it looked like the sun. The whole yard, the whole sky was lit up. I was amazed. Was it a super a blue moon? Yeah, or, I yeah. didn't know it was coming. Yeah. I had no idea. And um, I, I just was like, just thanking God for that. Because a widow, this is how a widow thinks, or it's how I think. Nehemiah's on the other side of that moon. He sees it from a different view. And Thank you, God, for letting me see it this side of the moon mm-hmm. right now. For letting us see this together. Thank you for letting us share this together. That's how I think. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. And I walked back in my house and I walked down my hallway to shut my front door. Outside of my front door is Nehemiah's memory garden. And I was shocked when I went to shut the front door that it literally, literally was a floodlight from the moon on his garden only in my front yard. Yeah. It was a floodlight. It was like a spotlight. I saw spotlight. the picture. It was wild. Incredible. Yeah. And that just, to me, on his day... For God to give me that gift. It was a gift. That's yeah. the kind of thing he's, things he's done for me. He has done that for me. He has, on my first birthday, on my, yeah, my first birthday after he died, I was so very, very distraught that morning when I woke up. And um, I just lay, I couldn't get out of the bed. I lay there and just cried. It was about 5 in the morning. I could not pull myself out of the bed. And I was crying out to God, why? He's not here for my birthday. You know, almost in a way, I, I was just wailing to myself, just crying. And couple minutes later my room kind of lit up and I had my eyes shut but I could still see my room light up and I opened my eyes and I was shocked to see what I saw I have a lantern that's on my um, someone had given to me to me when my husband died they gave me a lantern that had a deer in it because he was a big time hunter Uh and it was a snow globe and you turn the but you have to pick it up and you have to turn the light on underneath it you have to turn the button on for it to glow so I'm laying there with my eyes shut, and all of a sudden I see this glow in my room, and I turn around, and that lantern's on. Wow. It's on. I, I shot straight up in the bed and thought I was seeing things. But you, like I said, there's no way it could turn on unless you turned the button on. Yeah, just a gift or a It reminder. stayed on all day. It was amazing. Just story after story like that. But um, um, I could share two more quick ones. Yeah, go ahead. Um, he... My husband was Hispanic, so Spanish was in his family, of course, and there was a day, I think about a year after he passed, where, like I said earlier, it was super hard to, it's super hard to go to church mm-hmm. alone, and so that morning I was struggling, struggling, struggling to try to get myself to church, but I had made a vow to him. I promised him I would not, that I would stay the course, that I would not fall back. I would continue our life. Mm-hmm. You know, I would continue my life, and yeah. I would honor him, and I would not, I would not stop going to church. I would keep going. So that morning, I remember what I promised, got myself dressed, and drove to church, and I drove right past church. I couldn't pull in. I just drove right past, and I went and parked in a parking lot, and I just sat, 
and I prayed and I cried and um, I made myself go back to that parking lot and go to church. I was praying as I sat in the parking lot. I just need to feel him today. I just need to know he's beside me. Mm-hmm. I just somehow need to feel his presence today. Please, God, I just have to have that in church today if I go. So I went. Worship was beautiful. I stood by myself, cried the whole time. Quietly and silent to, silently to myself, I cried. And the Lord knew what I needed that day because... The song, The Blessing, came on, which was not unusual. Our church would sing that song. It was beautiful how it was sung. But then right in the middle of the song, one of the girls began to speak, sing it in Spanish. Wow. And I fell over. I just couldn't. Just lost it. I just couldn't. Yeah. But it was also, I felt my husband hold my hand that day. Immediately, I felt his presence beside me. And God gave me that. Yeah. That's the kind of things he does for me. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I would never want anybody to be in my place, but if you're in my place, I pray that God gives you these kind of things because it's so, it's what carries us through. We know, we know we have hope and we grieve and there's nothing wrong with grieving. We have to grieve. We have to. If we don't grieve, then it will kill you if you don't grieve. Oh, yeah. And so in our grieving, though, we still can see beautiful. We can still see his kindness and his love to us through things like this. And that's what he's done for me. Yeah. That's what he's done for me. So. It is so beautiful. Yeah, that's just part of it. I think <laughs> you, things. I think you have to be looking for it yeah. too. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you have to Expect like, pray, it. yeah. Yeah. You have to have a heart that's yeah. looking for yeah. it and that's postured towards like, God, I know you're still good, even yes. though this doesn't feel good mm-hmm. um, in order to see the good. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. that's so beautiful. Yeah. Well, I i mean, you've hit on so much that I was going to even ask about the way that community has yeah. helped out okay. family yeah. and the people that have surrounded you and helped you get through it. Yeah. Um, but tell me a little bit about fasting, because oh. you told me mm-hmm. um, that this month, kind of leading up to the anniversary of his passing, you've been fasting, right? Yes. Um, and um, what, what has that looked like, yeah. and what has that meant to you? Yeah. Um, nobody likes to fast, first of all, I'll no. say. It's not a fun thing. <laughs> it's it's a struggle way, for us. Form, I mean, whether you give, whatever you give up, it's hard to give those things up because it's part of our life. So uh, back in June, the Lord started dealing with me and speaking to me about um, that I need to prepare myself for the month of August because the month of August is all summer's hard. Yeah. Because memory after memory after memory. Because it, la- you know, he was in the hospital for two months. So it's just... Um, I remember everything that happened. Mm. So summers are hard, and August is especially hard. Uh, I have several deaths in August. It's not just my husband's. So I've experienced seven deaths in five years. And so three of them were in August. Wow. Um, So anyways, and our anniversary is in August. Yeah. So um, August is a tough month, and I knew that, God, um, I need to prepare myself this year, like I said, the third year, prepare myself for something different. And I honestly did not want it to be like my previous two Augusts. It was just so hard. Yeah. And uh, I just asked God for something different. Mm-hmm. I just want something different. So he told me I needed to fast. And so uh, I started August 1st fasting and um, keeping a journal of the things that happen each day. And I, I didn't bring that journal, but um, each day something significant has happened. I'm praying for my family in particular. I'm praying for uh, direction for me. What is my next assignment? Um, God has opened up my time this summer. He's opened up time for me um, so that um, I have extra time right now. Whatever he needs for me to do, I want to do it. I want to be open to what he has for me. And so I I need to clear my mind Mm -hmm. and um, sacrifice something in order for him, me to be able to hear him clearly. And so that's why I started the fast. One thing that has happened that is really, really big, significant to me is um, I led my granddaughter to the Lord. Wow. Yeah, I got to pray with her to accept Jesus. And my grandson, who is named after Nehemiah, was there that day and sat in my lap and reached across and held his sister's hands and just stared at her and watched her as she prayed. Wow. And it was beautiful. You know, we sat right beside my husband's urn and his picture Mm -hmm. and the four of us. I feel like he was there. Yeah. And we prayed together and 
the next week, which was last week, my daughter, my granddaughter Brooklyn came to me and she said, Nay, nay. I want you to know, I led one of my friends to Jesus. Wow. I told her I'd pray for her. She just has to say what I have to say. And she prayed after me, and she got saved too, Nene. That's amazing. So, you know, that happened during the fast. There's just so many things. And um, the storm, stor- uh, Hurricane Debbie came through during the fast. And, you know, um, oh, gosh, I could really go into this. Um, when physical storms come, it's a representation in a widow's heart what's going on inside of her. Mm. So when any time a storm or a high winds have hit my home, a lot of branches fall. It's constant work. It's been double the work since Nehemiah has been gone. Of course, he's not here to yeah. help me. But it seems like there's been more storms the past three years than there's ever been before, at least mm-hmm. in my home. And more work. Yeah. And... Um, more things that are falling falling so anyways hurricane debbie came through and and the other things that have happened in my home just really they rock me to my core and um but god always 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 brings me people to help me always helps me to remember somebody i can call for help yeah because a, a widow experiences a lot of memory loss a lot I don't care what age you are. You can't blame it on your age. Mm-mm. It's the trauma you go through. And uh, along with all kind of other loss, memory is a huge deal. So I ask God every day. I have asked him every day to help me remember what I need to remember for that day, to get me through that day. Help me remember something good, too, and yeah. not just remember anything bad. So he helps me remember when something happens at my home, who I can call to help me. Yeah. That was a friend of Nehemiah's. I mean, I've had guys from Spectrum even come help me with their bucket trucks because they will, they loved him. Yeah. And so God has helped me that way. So I say all that to say, when Hurricane Debbie came through, it just tore my yard up. I lost seven trees. First, I thought it was only three, but seven trees came down. Nothing was damaged at my home, but there's trees down all over the place. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I can do a lot of things at my house. I'm a workhorse. Always have been. If you know me, you people that know me, you know how much energy I've always had. And I never stop. Yeah. But one thing that is zapped in a widow is her energy. Yeah. You're zapped. So my energy level has been half probably what it was. And I'm building that back up. But I still work like a workhorse. And so I'm thinking, okay, Lord, um... This time, I've decided, and it was during the fast, I will not let this move me. Yeah. I will not let this move me. I know you know who can help me. I have reached out for three years to my same group, my same group, and they're there for me all the time, and I'm so grateful, so grateful. I have a wonderful family and wonderful friends that are more than family to me. Yeah. But there comes a time, and I'm at that time, where I know the, it's not sustainable. I know they have their lives, and I know they will still be there for me if I need them. But this is the time that I didn't want to reach out to them. I just trusted God, trusted God to take care of this situation with these trees in my yard. Yeah. And so, can I share? Yeah. So uh, someone alerted Faith Alive Ministries that I had this problem with the trees. And um, I received a text and a call saying that uh, they'd heard about it and they wanted to help. Mm -hmm. Well, I know about the volunteer base, but I purposely have never reached out to them because I have people I can reach out to. I know there's widows that don't have what I have, so I would never call on... I was never going to call. So I was first I was kind of shocked about it, but I thought, okay... And so um, I was told the, the man that wanted to come and help me, his wife was going to call me, so she called me, talked me through everything, said her husband uh, was going to be coming out to help. Mm-hmm. And I was just amazed. Yeah. So he came to help. He's helping now. Uh, he's been, he helped last week. I, I was out there working with him. If you can see my arms, they're all banged up and I'm sure. bleeding, <laughs> bloody. And but we've been out there working together. But he has been, it has been a huge blessing. And this man's doing it alone. And he's doing it because he loves widows. And he was raised a lumberjack his whole life, has always worked around wood. And his wife said, 
you know, he's he's 65 years old and retired, but he wants to serve and he wants to help and he wants to help widows. And if it, he hears the word wood, he's there. Yeah. So I'm like, come on. Yeah. So it's it's been a huge help to me, huge help to me, you know, so... Thank I you love for that. that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and I told Taylor, I said, we have to use that for the ministry yeah. too, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. because that's the body of Christ, people who follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, we should be following his commands. Mm-hmm. And he says that true and pure religion is to that's look right. after orphans and widows. That's right. mm-hmm. They are the ones who are close to the heart of God. I mean, and there's so many scriptures. We hear about those all the time yeah. in our Women of Purpose mm-hmm. groups. Mm-hmm. But um, widows and I think they just have a special place in the heart of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they should have a special place yeah. in the heart of the church. Yeah. There's a scripture that I found this morning, which I already knew the scripture. Let me find it really fast. Okay. It's Psalm 67, 5. A fa- he's a father to the fatherless. A defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. But the next line says, God sets the lonely in families. Yeah. So um, to me... I'm lonely. Mm -hmm. Widows are lonely people. They are. And he sets them in the body of Christ, which is to be our family, to help us. He allows widows to to be among us so that we don't think about ourselves all the time. We've got to think past ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, God calls us. I, I never... I knew these scriptures before mm-hmm. four years ago, five years ago. I knew these scriptures, yeah. but these scriptures are alive in me because that's what I'm living right now. Yeah. And, you know, each day, God, I meet with the Lord in the mornings. I Every morning, He shows Himself faithful to me. And every morning, I lay my life before Him in my quiet time. Um, Lamentations 3 tells us that His great love carries us. His great love carries me every day. Um, without His great love, every morning... And his faithfulness to me every morning. I would not be able to sit here and even talk about this. I know that he has me where he has me for a reason. Yeah. Even though I would not choose this life. Mm -mm. There were so many things me and Nehemiah had planned to start. We were fixing to retire. So many things that we had. uh, They were looking forward to. And um, I just have to believe. I have to believe that he's still in control of my life. And there's still some good and he's still going to use me, and I'm going to keep myself open to him. Because, you know, widows are hard to handle. We're sometimes hard to handle. It's hard for people to know how to read us. Yeah, and grief is just messy. Yeah, it just is. Yeah. Um, anybody that's going through grief, it's you don't know what to say to them. Mm-hmm. And many times I've said the wrong thing. Many times I've said the wrong thing. But um, as... I'm walking through this. Um, God is teaching me how to um, be able to speak to another widow, to be able to help her through as far as I've gone so far. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Like a brand new widow, what to say and what not to say, because I know what hurts and I know what doesn't hurt. I know what helps and I know what doesn't help. And so he's teaching me and and I want to keep myself open and teachable so that he can continue using me yeah. however he wants to use me. Well, you're living out Second Corinthians, you know, where it says that the Holy Spirit comforts us yeah. so that we can then comfort others right. with the same comfort we've mm-hmm. received. Right. Um, you're living out so many yeah. scriptures, mm-hmm. and it's it's just beautiful. It really is. It's, it's so inspiring, mm-hmm. and I know it doesn't always feel that yeah. way, yeah. but, man, you have shared so much mm-hmm. that I think other people will just listen yeah. to and be like, wow. Yeah. Wow, thank you. Well, There's a story of a sunflower I want to talk about for just a minute. Um, Sunflowers have always been one of my favorite flowers. And when Nehemiah was here, we tried so much to, hard to plant a field of sunflowers in front of our house. And it just never, it just never worked. Mm -hmm. It's on a hill and I think that washed away and the birds might have got the seeds. Anyways, they didn't bloom. So we began planting sunflowers just around our regular vegetable garden for several years before he passed and we loved the sunflowers mm-hmm. so when he got sick and was put in the hospital um we had a full garden he loved a garden but i had to let that garden go sunflowers everything i just i didn't even pay attention to them yeah. I let it go everything died so um in august usually at the end of july or first of august sunflowers start to wilt because I, I've planted them every year since then. I watch them. I keep watching them to see the time of year that they die. Mm-hmm. And they are gone in August, typically. They're gone. Mine are gone now. 
So um, after he left, um, I didn't even look out at the garden anymore because all of it was dead. Two months later in October, I was on my mower and I was just basically screaming and crying because I could do that on the mower and nobody really hear me mm -hmm. very well. And I was crying and um, I was just asking God questions and just asking for another sign that day. And I glanced over at my garden, which had been pulled up. We'd already cleaned it out. And there was two stray sunflowers, stalks, about four or five feet high. Now, I had not seen them. I said, those don't grow overnight. And they had full blooms on them. Wow. It, I was shocked. But I, in a way, I wasn't shocked because that was another way he comforted me. And so the sunflower has become precious to me, and that was in October. And so um, a, a, re, a song has come. And I love flowers anyway, but mm -hmm. sunflowers are special. Um, so as you know, I just shared that this is Nehemiah's week that he went home. And over the weekend, last weekend, I put on my Spotify, and a song came on, a new song that I've never heard of before. i got to get my phone for this. And it is a song called Flowers. Hmm. And I've never heard it. It's got to be brand new. And um, I, of course, listened to it and was just, just so taken back by it. It doesn't talk about a sunflower, but it talks about flowers. Uh-huh. And it tells my story, almost. And I'm going to read the lyrics, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. This is just part of the lyrics. So that I hope this will help somebody, because it sure did minister to me. So whatever the reason, I'm barely getting by. I'll, trust, I'll just trust it's a season, knowing that you're by my side. Every step of the way, I know I'll be okay. Because I brought it up in a desperate prayer. Lord, why are you keeping me here? Then he said to me, child I'm planting seeds I'm a good God and I have a good plan so trust that I'm holding a watering can and someday you'll see the flowers that grow in the valleys now remember Nehemiah's vision was a valley with flowers wow it also included mountains when I'm on a mountain and looking down below I see the valley of flowers that needed time to grow And I'll thank you, God, for the rain, the hurt, and the days of pain. I'll bring it up in a desperate and grateful prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping me here. You know just what I need, and, you're, and you've planted seeds because you're a good God, and a, you have a real good plan. You hold my world and a watering can so I can have peace because flowers grow in the valley. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's like it was written for you. I know. It's amazing. And it was this week that this song came out. And so I know that was for me. Wow. So, yeah. Gosh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful. So I think that the best encouragement that we can offer listeners today mm -hmm. is to look for the hand of God in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's like a common theme that we've heard yeah. is just that in the midst of heartache or loss, um, death, grieving, whatever it is, um, God hasn't left, um, that he still does have a plan, and that if you'll look for him, you can see that he's still walking with you through it and that there are just constant reminders of his love so um, I want to thank Renee for being with us today this has just been amazing and I'm yeah. so grateful for you and I can't wait to see in the future how else God uses your story as you're just a willing vessel for him so. can I share one quick thing two widows sure um, advice for widows mm -hmm. just lay your life every day before the Lord lay your life down because it's not ours anyway it's his. Lay your life down and ask him every day to show you something good. Ask him every day to help you remember good memories and not mm -hmm. all the bad that we went through when our husbands died. Because that, that takes forefront so many times in our memories. But ask him to show you good memories. And also help somebody. Help somebody else. If you can think beyond yourself, get yourself to that point that you can reach out and help somebody else in whatever way. Make a meal. 
that was my thing in the beginning. I just was constantly making meals for people because I love to cook and it's something I mm -hmm. knew I could still do. And so um, whatever brings you joy will bring you joy and that you can spread that joy to someone else. Believe me, it will make you stronger. It will make you stronger if you reach out to someone else and tell your story. Don't be afraid to tell your story because every time you do, he will make you stronger every time. So good. So true. Yeah. That's what I'm experiencing. That's what I'm living. Yeah. Every time. Every time he makes me stronger. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Because, you know, there's more to come in our life. Yeah. And there's more grief coming. And there's more heartache. And there's more pain. And this world's not getting any better. And if we don't use what he gives us right now in our hands that he gives us right now, and then give that to him and let him use it the way he wants to use it and grow through it, we won't make it in the days to come. Mm -mm. And I promised my husband I'd stay the course yeah and I will do that whatever it takes for my children and my grandchildren I will continue to pray and they will walk with God they are walking with God and we will all be together again one day and I'm so grateful for that promise yeah grateful amen mm -hmm. Whew. take that and chew on it over and over rewatch this for all those nuggets that Renee just gave us of truth that just can minister to each of us in the days to come so we love you guys, and we'll see you next time on Chasing Jesus. Mm -hmm.